in years past, there's always been a bear foraging for berries somewhere around here. But I think berry season's pretty much done. But um, always right here. Today I thought it would be a great catch-up day to kind of fill you folks in on what I've been doing, what's been going on, and, uh, and, and what I'm thinking about. So specifically, we'll talk about the fires, we'll talk about the race, we'll talk about the Pesaten Institute, and we'll talk about the kind of confused relationship between the representations of SL2R and the Vida Soto algebra, at least as they apply to physics. So first, the fire season. The fire season has been epic. It started with like a day of really hot temperatures, 110, which is anomalously high for us. And after about a week of that nonsense, which I probably think was the last video I published, the fires just kind of started and didn't stop. Uh, all three major drainages in this area that I live uh, were affected in some capacity by fire, uh, two of them pretty badly. Um, the air was really bad. We couldn't go outside. <laughs> we couldn't stay really inside because of COVID. So it was a um, it was an awkward time. Really, a lot of anxiety. Fires have since subsided mostly. Uh, the rains have come. It's been nice. So now, what we're on the lookout for is debris flows, uh, flash floods, that kind of thing. So it's still it still is important. Don't let your guard down. In the middle of all that smoke and fire, <laughs> I was training for a race and it was a big race. It's the first trail running race that I've run uh, in a couple years, pretty much since COVID started, uh, really. Um, it was in Arizona. It was really long. It was like 100 miles, 103 or something. Uh, and as I do with these kinds of things, I get really narrowly focused and really kind of pinpoint obsessed with training and running and, and focusing on, on strategies for the race or whatever. So, uh, so that coupled with the fact that trying to get some exercise despite all that smoke uh, <laughs> made for a very stressful summer but i have been thinking about a lot of other stuff part of the reason that i started this channel was because i wanted to understand better the mathematical underpinnings of conformal field theory and string theory and how those relates to those are related to vertex operator algebras hence i guess the organizing principle of this channel and of late really interesting things have come out basically you know over the past few years all of Merriam's work is really interesting to me and then on top of that like there's been a lot of progression in the moonshine uh kind of field of study so the uh iguchi and um tachikawa and was it uguri is it those three guys anyway the the umbral moonshine um came out a while ago and that's interesting a lot of developments have happened there uh, and just like the other day jeff harvey and friends published another paper on another kind of moonshine that's um really interesting why is it interesting well <laughs> as a physicist uh, we're primarily interested in physical theories, which are dictated by, you know, like the Hamiltonian, the energy operator of the quantum system, and we exponentiate that in some capacity to give us the... Uh, one way to think about it is the, the path integral, another way to think about it is the partition function. And moral of the story is moonshine is some kind of relations between uh, the partition function of a physical theory, or ostensibly a physical theory, and uh, some modular junk, some modular form stuff. So it, it, it's a nice way to kind of take what we know from deep 19th century mathematics, right, modular forms and so on, and use that as an organizing principle, sort of, to understand uh, some physical theories, what those physical theories should mean, and, and what that relationship is still is kind of a mystery. So 
that's why I'm interested in it anyway. And I'm sure that's why a lot of you are interested in it too. So um, because of that, I thought, gosh, we need to do a little bit better job of connecting the dots to the physics. Besides, I really like to make videos about things that bug me, ideas that I struggled with, because I know that way that at least in principle, they'd be helpful to someone like me. Um, and so hence why we were talking for a long time about SL2R and representations thereof, and, and you know, because nobody ever really talks about that kind of stuff in physics. So today I want to talk about the representations of SL2R and the representations of the Vita Soto algebra and why they're kind of related, but not, not the same thing and why they should be. I wanna start talking more about those relationships because I feel like that stuff is swept under the rug. And at least for me, I was confused uh, about that material. So over the next few videos, you'll see more of that. One thing that's kind of complicated for physicists <laughs> in studying kind of non-simple Lie algebras or it's Lie groups is the representation theory is a little ornery. Um, you know, for representations of things like SU2 or SO, you know, SO3, uh, we have finite dimensional uh, representations that are unitary. We do not have those for the case of SL2R, as we've seen before. In fact, if anything, um, the best you can do is a semi-infinite tower of states um, with kind of a highest or lowest uh, weight state. Um, but of course, as we saw with Bargman's construction way back, gosh, a few, you know, months ago, um, there are kind of a continuous series of representations and, and full, you know, the full lattice, uh, both positive and negative representations. But what's interesting for physics specifically are these semi-infinite representations. Why? Because they provide us with the opportunity to have a unitary representation. Um, unitary means different things to different people. From a mathematician's perspective, it's... Uh, has to do with the dual space and the inner product and and having a positive definite you know metric space and all that blah 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 from a physics standpoint physicist standpoint what this means is that we don't lose energy we have a uh, if you like a, a sensible way of thinking about probability in quantum mechanics <laughs> a non-unitary theory means that the wave function would leak out into the imaginary domain or you um lose conservation of energy or something, which we don't know what to do with uh, at a fundamental level. So in other words, we think those theories are pathological, so we throw them out. <laughs> so that's why unitary theories are interesting. Okay, good. So why would you care about the Vita Soto algebra? That's another great question. One of the reasons is the Vita Soto algebra is a central extension, right, of the diffeomorphisms of the circle. So, you know, you can think of the vector space of diffeomorphisms of the circle is kind of a natural thing to consider from a mathematician's point of view, but the representations of that diffeomorphism group or, or the associated Lie algebra um, are infinite dimensional in, 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 in both directions. The Vita Soto algebra has highest weight representations, so it has in some sense the capacity to make unitary representations, and these unitary representations are things that we can make physical sense out of, which is why physicists are so excited about them, uh, and which is why when you're Dealing with conformal field theory, you have to pay attention to, to the conformal weights and the central charge and, and what they mean and how, how they impact the capacity of that theory to be unitary. So that's where all this is coming from. That's why I'm excited about it. That's why a lot of other folks are excited about it, I think. <laughs> so um, these are the kinds of ideas that we're going to try to develop before we dive back into the actual construction, say, of the untwisted vertex operator algebra representation of, SL, of the affine Lie algebra SL2. So much to do, oh my gosh. There's one thing I forgot to say, which is probably really important, and that is that uh, SL2R is a sub-algebra of the Vita Soto algebra, right? The Vita Soto algebra has all of these kind of infinitely many generators, like say L sub n, um, but if you restrict to the specific case of L sub 1, minus 1, and 0, you get a sub-algebra, and that sub-algebra is entirely uh, agnostic to the central charge. So, um, anyway, yeah, that's why it at least in principle makes sense to ask, is this SL2R representation a representation of the Vita Soto algebra or not? Like, is it a sub-representation? Like, where does, uh, where does the alignment happen? Um, but that's a bigger question that we're gonna have time for.
today. Okay, back to the video. to talk about the, the Poseidon Institute too um, <laughs> but I don't really have a lot of time left in the video so I guess what I'm gonna say is if you're interested in quantum mechanics or particle physics go check it out we've uploaded a bunch of new stuff in the past few months it's really exciting we're about to put together a lecture series uh, so more on that and more on that race that I ran uh, later in a few days from now something like that okay hope you guys are doing well um, let me know what you're thinking about. I'm really curious to learn if other folks are playing around with these same ideas. Uh, next time, let's talk about conformal invariance in D dimensions. Okay, now I gotta run home. Also, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere especially, and you have any kind of passing interest in astronomy or stars, that kind of thing, um, I have a, a little newsletter that I put out maybe once a week. Uh, I've just started it up again because, you know, it's autumn. And um, if you want, there, there's a subscription link below. Um, I, I throw in some physics news too and some math stuff, but mostly it's about stargazing and, and what's up in the night sky. Uh, so yeah, if that's your bag, cool. If not, don't worry about it. Uh, anyway, go. <laughs> okay, sorry to throw so much stuff at you. I'm just so excited about everything. I can't get over it. Oh my God. Okay, let's go. Okay.